An enumeration is a user-defined data type which consists of a set of related values. The keyword enum is used to define enumerated data types. Since the keyword is short for enumeration, I am going to pronounce it enum, but you may wish to say enum as is often heard. Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is an introductory video that will be followed in the weeks to come with videos of practical examples to reinforce the concept. But first, before we can apply it, we need to learn the basics. And in this video, we'll cover the basic enumeration syntax, including raw and associated values. And we'll explore the power of the switch statement and including functions within our enum definition. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. The way I'm going to approach this is to take a look at how one might have approached a problem that is much better when using an enum. So let's consider this array, which is the days of the week, all string elements. If we want to create a variable or a constant for what is often called hump day, the middle of the work week, we'll see that that's the fourth value in our array, but the third index since arrays start at zero. So we can define hump day A, and I'll use A to indicate it's an array value, as array days of week three. Looking at our code, we have no idea what that day is until we run the code, and then we see that it's Wednesday. And this is where enums have a great advantage. Let's create an enum that will represent the days of the week. And this is a finite set of values which is a good choice for an enum. The simplest way to create an enum is to simply define the enum and list all possible cases. And just like defining a struct or a class, we start with the keyword enum and then our curly brackets or braces. And within these braces, we can take a shortcut and use a single case keyword followed by all cases separated by commas. And you'll notice that it's common practice to use lowercase letters for all of our cases. Now, when we want to define our hump day, we can just do let hump day equal days of week dot. And then note, as soon as we enter the dot, we're presented with all of our options to pick from. So we can just pick Wednesday. Since we use lowercase words in our cases for days of week, it would be nice to have them capitalized as they should be when we want to print it out. No problem with our array because we can use any one of these string functions on our element. For example, let's say our Wednesday element in our array was lower cased. We could simply then just do hump day dot capitalized to have it display with a capital letter. But when we try to apply a similar type function like capitalized to our hump day, which is our enum constant, we get an error our enum has no member capitalized. If you check out the quick help for our two constants, we see that hump day is one of the cases of our enum, while hump day A is defined as a string. What we can do though is define a type for our enum. In this case, we can say that all of our cases is a string by adding that to our declaration. This still doesn't solve our problem, but we can specify the raw value of our string case. And what that will do is stringify, if you like, the case, and then we can capitalize it. So hump day dot raw value dot capitalized. We can, if we like, add functions to our enum so that if we always want to display our day as a capitalized value, we can add a function like this by creating a function that returns a string that is a raw value capitalized. And then when we want to display the date, we can just do hump day dot display day instead. The switch construct in Swift is a very powerful construct. Let's say we don't know what day of the week hump day is, and we want to check when that is, and perhaps print out something to the console. Using our array, it's very cumbersome to construct the switch statement. Let's create a function called what to do that takes in a string, which will be one of our days of the week, and then check what it is through a switch statement and return a string response. We start with switch day, which is just a generic string. 
and we have to build all cases and recreate a return string response. So let me speed up my typing here to save some time. Even after we account for all cases, Swift has no idea if you've covered them all, because hump day A is just a string as far as it's concerned. So we'll let Et's code fix this by adding in the default case and we'll return an appropriate response. Let's test this and find out what to do on our hump day A constant. Perhaps you didn't expect that response. Well, it's because we have lowercase w for Wednesday and the comparison didn't match. It should have been a capital W. This is a problem when using strings. It's too easy to make mistakes. Let's look at how we would handle this with an enum. We'll start by creating our function in the same way, but this time we'll pass in a days of week enum. Now when we start switch day, right away we get a warning that switch must be exhaustive with the option of letting Xcode fix it for us. And just like that, all options are presented with no default because our enum must be one of the seven values. Let's just copy in the same results with a lightning speed of my typing. There's no way you can make a mistake now. When we call the function, our parameter must be a days of week and you restrict it to choosing from one of those days of week cases. It doesn't mean that you don't ever use a default in a switch statement when using an enum though. Let's create another function to check if a day is on a weekend. Funk, is it a weekend? And pass in a day that is a days of week and return a bool this time. We can switch on day, and for the two cases that are weekends, return true, and this time we do use default to cover all of the other five cases and simply return false. And yes indeed, Saturday is on a weekend. For the next part, I've created a new playground and have added the same days of week enum as in the last playground, but instead of using a comma between cases, I've separated each out onto a single line and each with its own case keyword. Our enum still has raw values of type string that will default to the string representation of our case, but we can assign a different raw value for each. For example, if we wanted to have the raw values be the abbreviations of each, we could do it this way. So now doing something like let Sunday equals days of week dot Sunday dot raw value, it will display the abbreviation. If we fail to assign a specific raw value, then it'll default back to the string representation of the case. Let's consider this enum called numbers. And we're gonna create five cases representing the integers one through five. And instead of declaring this enum as a string type, let's use int. Now, if we want to know the integer value of case one, for example, you might think we can just do let num equals numbers dot one. But this num is just the case of numbers. If we want a number, we'll need to use the numbers dot one dot raw value. However, this generates a zero and not a one that we'd want. And we can solve this in two ways. We could create a function that returns an int and in the body increments the raw value by one. And now instead of specifying the raw value, we can use the real value and say num equals numbers dot one dot real value. But there's a better way. Enums have a way of auto setting the raw values. As we saw in the last example, we can assign a specific value for each case. 
but there's a bonus here. If the numbers assigned are sequential, we only need to assign the first one and it will increment accordingly. So we can say case one equals one. And this works for ints, doubles, and floats. So we can see that numbers.5.rawValue will indeed give us the integer five. Whatever you start at, it will increment from there. So if we start at one equals negative two, then numbers.5.rawValue will be positive two. You can loop over all cases in an enum, but in order to do that, you must simply have your enum conform to the case iterable protocol. And by doing so, it opens up a whole host of new options. So for example, if we do this for our days of week, we can now see that our type days of week has a new static dot all cases property. And we see that it's actually a collection of all the cases. So we can do things like days of week dot all cases dot count. And we find as expected, we have seven cases. And since it's a collection, we can use other collection higher order functions like map. Let's say we want to extract an array of strings that is the capitalization of all of our days of week raw values. Let cap days equals days of week dot all cases dot map and then using shorthand notation dollar zero dot raw value dot uppercased. Now if you don't understand higher order functions like map, I suggest you watch my video series on higher order functions and I'll leave a link in the notes below. We can loop through each of the items in a for in loop as well, as long as we add the dot all cases static property to days of week. We can print that if the day of the week is a Saturday or Sunday, it's a weekend, but a work day otherwise. The possibilities are endless with this power. And I want to finish off this introductory video by taking a look at associated values. Each enum case can have an associated value. And unlike the raw value, associated values can be of different types. And the one caveat is that enums with associated values can't have raw values. For example, we can construct an enum for activities with four cases, sleep, game, run, and eat. We don't care about how long a person sleeps, but we'd like to know the name of the game that they play, so we'll associate the name as a string. If he runs, we'd like to know the distance in kilometers as an int. And if he eats, we'd like to record what is eaten, which is also a string. Now with this enum, we can create an activity struct that will have three properties, one for morning, afternoon, and evening, and all of them are of type activity. So we can record, for example, Johnny's activities by creating an instance of activity. And when we select an appropriate activity, we're required to enter a value if there's an associated value. And in this case, he eats eggs in the morning, runs 10K in the afternoon, and sleeps in the evening. Note that sleep doesn't require any additional parameter. Of course, if you really want to tighten up your data entry, you can define another enum that would be a list of approved games. For example, let's create an enum of valid games with only two cases, checkers and chess, and then specify that the associated value of the game be a valid game. This would mean that when our user selects a game activity, they could only enter one of the two approved types. Well, that completes this introduction to enums. And as mentioned in the introduction, the next few weeks of my videos, I'll intersperse a number of practical examples to show you how I use enums in my development and perhaps learn more about Swift, Swift UI, and even more about enums. Thanks for watching. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store. 
and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.